Hey, how's it going guys, it's Tiger, and in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down the concept, dual processing theory. Uh, and I'm not gonna be using any sort of scientific terminology. I really just wanna make this as simple and as easy to digest as possible. So, let's get into it. Also, if you are new here, subscribe, subscribe. I'd really appreciate it, because I'm gonna be posting a lot of uh, other videos that aren't even related to dual processing theory that are just interesting and they're more geared towards entertainment. So keep on the lookout for that. So dual processing theory, it's a mouthful. We get that, but what is the general idea behind it? Let's break it down. So dual processing theory, I think a really good way to go about this is to look at the actual phrase. So when we're talking about dual, what are we talking about? Well, basically dual is just a fancy way of saying anything related to two. So uh, when we are talking about dual, we're talking about anything related to two. But what about processing? What does that mean? What, what are we talking about when we're referring to processing? Basically, when we're talking about processing, we're talking about how we process things. How does our brain process things? In other words, how do we think? One way I also like to think about it uh, is like this, right? So the term process um, actually comes from an old French word, and that old French word meant journey. I like to think of information going on a kind of journey every single time we think, right? In your every single waking moment, you are thinking. Even when you're sleeping, your brain is active. You are thinking. Information is being processed. So in summary for the phrase dual processing, we're talking about two ways of thinking. That is it. It's literally that simple. There are essentially two different ways of thinking in the brain. Now that we got the definition out of the way, what are we talking about when we say there are two ways of thinking. Basically, the way a lot of scientists like to think of it is that, hey, there are two fundamental systems in the brain, system one and system two. However, in this video, I'm simply gonna be referring to system one as the unconscious and system two as conscious. When we talk about system one, when we talk about the unconscious, we are talking about a very fast route of information processing, right? So kind of split second things that you literally aren't even aware of. The unconscious system is fast and instantaneous. It's also in charge of a lot more information than system two. It's been estimated that system one processes about 100,000 times more bits of information than system two. Really quick, let's just go over a very simple and easy to understand example of the unconscious at work. So the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X just came out. I'm gonna use this as an example, right? So when you first, like think of the first time that you got like a game console like PlayStation or Xbox. For me, it was the Xbox 360, even though now I use a PlayStation 4. When I first got the Xbox 360, played FIFA, that was like the first game. Right away I get this brand new controller, I literally don't know what A is for, I don't know what B is for, C, D, I, I don't understand the controls whatsoever, it's a new thing. So I have to consciously be like, okay, this this is pass, this is shoot, this is cross, this is, this is how I dribble the ball. I have to really actively think through my conscious system just so that I can get through the first game. But over time, the unconscious system, system one, takes, takes over, it's like, hey, don't worry, I, 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 I'll take care of things. So now, if I go right now, even on Xbox 360, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and I play FIFA, I don't have to consciously think, oh, this is shoot, this is, this is pass, this is um, dribble, because the unconscious system has already taken care of that. When you game, you don't even think about using the joystick at all. You just don't. You think about the experience that's in front of you, because that, to you, is what's most important. Okay, so let's talk about System 2. System 2 is none other than the conscious system, the conscious way of thinking, the conscious way of processing information. And this is not the dominant way of thinking, right? The unconscious uh, form of thinking is considered the dominant method of thinking, whereas the conscious system is kind of um, not less important, but less active in terms of processing information. So then you're probably just like, okay, so, what, so what's the big deal then? Why is there a conscious system? Why would evolution, go out of its way to put in place another form of thinking, like another way of processing information. And there's actually a very good reason for this. And 
that is that well, even though system two, the conscious system processes information a lot slower, it has the advantage in that it's very logical. When we talk about things like critical thinking, thinking rationally, thinking logically, we're using the conscious system um, of our brain. And you can see in humans how much this has benefited us throughout time. Without that conscious system, we would not be able to invent so many things and write so many great works of philosophy of logical reasoning. We just would not be able to do that. A lot of things that make you you are a result of that logical form of thinking. Also, another really interesting thing is that sometimes that rational way of thinking can say, hey, let me take care of this and then I'll pass it on to the unconscious. So what I mean by that is this, right? Think about the first time you rode a bike. You were thinking very consciously, like this is how I have to do it. Or maybe you're learning how to skateboard for the first time. It's very hard. You have to logically think of the mechanics, of the technique, of how to ride your bike properly, how to skateboard properly, right? That's all system two taking care of, care of that job, right? But over time, once that information is, is processed enough, once you start to learn that this is how you ride a bike, this is how you skateboard, then the unconscious system takes over. That's really interesting because in many ways, the conscious system can say, hey, this is the information that's important to me, and this is the information that I want stored in the future, okay? I wanna learn how to ride a bike, okay? I'm consciously thinking about it, boom, whatever, it takes practice, boom. Transfers to the unconscious system, and it's stored there almost permanently, right? As you can tell, it's very deceiving to say, okay, system one, the unconscious system, is more important than the conscious system just because it processes more information, right? That is not a good argument. Both of them are necessary and important facets of the way we think. All right, I'm glad that we got all that stuff out of the way. Um, now I'm gonna talk about a little more um, fun facts about dual processing theory. Okay, so when people uh, say dual processing theory, it probably is more correct to say dual processing theories because there's a lot of different theories behind the way we think, right? It's not a new concept. You could say probably that the first really scientific form of, of dual processing theory was introduced by a man by the name of William James, who's a very famous um, psychologist. However, over time, a lot of people kind of have their own versions of this dual processing theory. At the end of the day, even though right now there are a lot of scholars that are arguing, okay, this is, no, this is how system one works. This is how system two works. This is how system one works. This is how system two works. It still appears to be the case that everybody kind of agrees, hey, there, it's two systems. There's an unconscious system and there's a conscious system. So that's why we've kind of stuck with that dual processing title, despite all the controversy and disagreements on the actual mechanisms behind it. Another really interesting thing is that, you know, a lot of scholars at first were just like, okay, only humans have both systems. Only, only humans have the conscious system of thought. We now know that that's not the case. However, it does appear to be true that humans, in terms of how much they use system two and how much information they, they are able to process through system two, um, the conscious system, far exceeds the amount of any other animal on this planet. Anyway, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I really hoped you liked it. And please, just subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna be posting some cool content, really good content, hopefully. Hopefully you think that. <laughs> In the meantime, yeah, just hit notification, subscribe, and most importantly, comment down below because I want to hear what your thoughts are on dual processing theory. Not exactly the most interesting thing in the world to most people, but nonetheless, give me your, give me your thoughts. But yeah, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video, and please, as always, take care.